I want to talk about the deterioration of the law of God and the increase of the House Negro under Obama. And then if, if, if you would dovetail from the deterioration of the law of God and the increase of the House Negro under Obama to the deterioration of democracy and the increase of the white, uh, white money power and white supremacy under Trump. And this is going to allow you, I'm, this is going to, I'm going to ask you to allow me to be a bit, if you will, uh, not loosen my facts, but, but just in over, giving a general overview of where we are in America at present. I don't know if you're old enough to remember or if you even care to remember, and most of you are old enough to remember, what the world was like before Barack Hussein, the long-legged Mac Daddy Obama, became president. I mean, there were problems. There were racial problems, to be sure. There was poverty. There was drug addiction. There was homelessness. In terms, if you're looking at one side of the track, that was to be sure. There's no doubt about that. There was, a, there was ton, There were ton, tons of that. And there were some. There were a large number of people that were vying to become mayors and congresspersons and senators and everything, thinking that the political way was the way out. And, and, and prior to that, many of them were so-called mega churches. Now, they weren't churches of the Lord Jesus Christ, but they were mega gathering places for the greedy uh, to go on a Sunday and, and hear something about how God loves them. He's going to perform a miracle with them. And, and that was all. it had been that way for several years. Bill Clinton had, and, and, and George Bush, pardon me, even 9-11 didn't stop that. But you need to think now, just look at where the church is at now and the law of God. I had an article the other day about, you know, they, Dr. Seuss, where I saw an article today that many of his books are going to be banned because of, you know, the homosexual crowd now, LGBTQ people. They are just controlling the world. They're controlling, they have mind control. They're controlling thoughts. They're controlling whatever you see on television now. Everything has got to be balanced before Obama, there was to some degree a sense that an equality about having, well, you got to have black people represented in some of the ads, you know, have black people smoking cigarette, cigarettes and drinking liquor as you have them selling stuff or whatever it is they're doing. But now you got to have, since Obama, you got to have LGBTQ people drinking, selling cigarettes, and they don't sell those on television anymore and in ads. But you know what I'm talking about, right? You got to have, you got to have LG. You just can't have the equality now of so-called Hamite people. You got to have the LGBT crowd represented. Whatever the hell's going on? I mean, you got to have the LGBT crowd on on, on Sesame Street. You got to get rid of Big Bird and got to get some other Tweety Pies in there. You know, I mean, the whole process of, is being rearranged since Obama. You know, everything's got to have a representation of of, of uh, LGBTQ since that boy Obama. Everything in the church got to have marriages of LGBTQ people in the church, and you got to have a great exaltation of the House Negro on Obama. By that, I mean that's the Negroes that you know work for the plantation owner. They whether they call themselves mayors or senators or whether they call themselves I don't know. They yeah they but they they're nothing more than House Negro. They ain't got no power. <laughs> What's that? Lori Lightfoot, I think, is the per per person who's the president of uh, uh, the mayor of Chicago, Illinois, right? Before that, there's a whole lot of other people. But it, it's important that we recognize how society's changed. And some of you may have noticed as well, since the law of God is no longer the law of the, of the church, it, it wasn't really effectively, but no one stood up actually and, and, and declared it ineffective. Sister Barack Hussein Obama, everybody was throwing the law out. But you may have noticed as well that, uh, you know, church population, people going to church now has greatly decreased. Uh, I mean, and, and I'm talking in mega ways and in mega organizations. Even the mega churches now don't bring in the kinds of crowds that they used to. And it's getting worse. There's less, if you will, television or televangelism on television. Because there's less of an order. People don't want to watch that nonsense anymore. Now, the duration of democracy under Donald Trump, that's the duration of the law of God under, under Obama, who was the son of Satan. Now you got the deterioration of democracy under the servant of Satan and Donald Trump. And the increase, while Obama played a part in this, in white money power. By that, I'm not talking about white power. I'm talking about white money power. Japheth people power. I mean, you've got... 
you've got more million billionaires, not millionaires. You've got more people that have become billionaires in America since Obama and tribulation Trump than ever in the history of the world. I think some 600 families, and I'll say families, that uh, control nearly 51% of the wealth in America. Imagine that. Only 600 families, and you could say people, right, got more money collectively as their net worth than, than 49% of all Americans, every person working, I mean, that's how, that's how much that's how rich the how much richer the rich are getting, and how much poor the poor are getting. Uh, you look at a person like Jeff Bezos, for instance. That boy's filthy rich, and that boy is. I mean, he got so much money he could never count it. While on the other hand, you got you got as many poor people as Jeff Bezos has got dollars. Something's wrong. It's called white money power. And on Wall Street, people are lying and robbing and stealing and jacking and, you know, land grabbing and taxing and getting, getting richer. That, and that has happened under Obama and Trump. And then under Obama, of course, you got the rise of white supremacy under Trump as well. And white supremacy is not against something that are against necessarily Hamite people or black people, if you will. White supremacy is a group of people are crying out and saying, we're, we're suffocating here in America. We are the children of the, of the daughters of the American Revolution. Our fathers and forefathers came over on the, on the, on the, uh, the Mayflower. And yet we are the poorest, less educated now, less political clout. And we're not necessarily against black folk. We're against the system now of government that's suppressing our eminence. And in another couple of years, another 10 years, we're going to be a major minority getting voted out by the Mexicans. And so white supremacy is now standing up and said, it stops here. We got to, we got to take back our country, take back America. And this has happened, of course, under Trump. It would have happened under anybody else for that matter. I, would want to just drop this on you. I know you're not going to check it. You're not going to dig jig it with it. But we are in the tribulation, and these things are going, only going to continue. It's going to get a whole lot worse. You need to really, if you, if you think things are bad now, in the event that we are around, let's say, 10 years from now, you will not recognize America. You won't. And... I doubt if there be any churches, these, these cathedrals. The, the other thing is that, you know, if you look at, okay, Amazon and, uh, and, 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 and Walmart, Amazon hires over 800,000 people shipping all kinds of stuff from, from peanut butter, butter to baby diapers or shoes or whatever they, Amazon, they, they taking over, they're going to close down stores. You're going to see more poor people than you ever seen in your life. Who can't run a business? And Jeff Bezos don't give a damn that your business don't work no more. You go shut down the post office. Then you got Walmart that hires over 1.5 million companies. I mean, one corporation hires over 1.5 million people, right? And you're going to see the worst of the worst happening in our society as this this kind of economic disparity increases, and it's going to increase. Um, and then Google and Facebook are two other monsters. I mean, at some point in time, you know, Facebook and Google, if they don't give you an outlet for you to be able to make a statement or present your wares, you're just going to go by way to cut flour. That's, that's it. You're going to die. Google now runs the information world. Facebook is second in command in terms of ruling the information world, and it's going to get worse. That, that boy Jeff Bezos and that other fella running around there running Facebook, you know, uh, and there's no, you're not going to take the power from these people. These people got power. They got power over the politician. They can make the politician pee when they say pee. I'm talking about the president and everybody else because they got power. You see what they did to Donald Trump, right? You see what they did? To, you took that took that boy's Twitter account said, you will not tweet no more. He ain't heard from him. He can't make no noise now. Donald Trump can't, can't make a little, whole lot of noise, shaking, rattling pots and pans. And all of this has happened as a result of both Obama. 
You know, one other, and Donald Trump, one other thing, and I promise not to inflict myself upon you any further, you, spiritually, and you we need a spiritual lens, and the, and, the, and the ignorant will never hear this and never understand it, but I, you can't begin to imagine the number of lives that have been destroyed by the prophecy of a president uh, and a black person and Obama, especially young boys. Now, most people will not agree with this because they, they'd like to think otherwise, uh, and they're entitled to do that. Um, but with, let's, let's start here with the number of young boys that killed each other in Chicago. Let's start with Trayvon Martin, who felt, as I had prophesied, that he was going to be above the law, that somehow or another that all of the suffering and all of what had happened in Roots and, and black people and all of that kind of stuff was all over with now because we got a black president. And so when someone of another color tells you, and uh, George, whatever his name, was not even white, you don't have to stop anymore. Um, we had not seen very, people, very many people taking a policeman's gun until Michael Brown actually reached in and took the police officer's gun while he's sitting in the car because he's thinking, now, we got a black president. We're God now. We, we, we got a black president. We don't have to. Generically, the number of black men that between the ages of 15 and perhaps 35 that just threw their lives away because they thought that they were... They were saved by having a black president. That stopped, that saved them from everything and that they worshiped Obama. Right now, there are a large number of, you're going to hear a, a, a large people, number of people pro proclaiming that they're, that they're, you know, they, they're giving birth to children, couples, right? Even homosexual couples are going to give birth to children. It's, going, it's called, uh, because the COVID-19, a lot of parents and husband and wife have been staying home so when they stay home, they have sex. When they have sex, they have babies. <laughs> I'm a part of the baby boom. When all the men came home from Europe in the World War II, the women hadn't had any sex, men hadn't had any sex, and that. So they all started having sex, and a whole bunch of children were all born at one time called the baby boomers. I'm a baby boomer. There's going to be a qualification of children born in the, over the next nine months because of all the people that have stayed home, social distancing, not going out, wearing a mask. So husbands and wives got together to stop making babies. What I think that I'm trying to say to you is that anyone who will look spiritually and honestly at what's happening now to the Hamite people as a result of the fact that so many people threw their lives away thinking that salvation had come to them in Obama. He was the most wicked, lying Person, he didn't do one damn thing except skin flint, lie, and pimp like a long legged Mac daddy. That's all that he just pimped, talk that talk, you know, and pimped for Wall Street. And, and black men threw their lives away worshiping this man. Well, the same thing with Donald Trump. Same thing with Donald Trump. The exact the, the, the Southern Baptist Robert Jeffress Franklin Graham. People threw their churches under the bus for Donald Trump. And there's no good, there's no not. So we're in the tribulation, I think is what I want to say to you. And moreover, we're not going to be able to retrieve and return, go back to a sense of normalcy of what it was before these two extraordinarily wicked people came upon the scene with an extraordinary power of influence. But me, of course, I'm James David Manning. I am the Lord's servant, and we are in the tribulation, but I'm a member of the elect, and I and mine will survive. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places, for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting, rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yay or nay, whether to go or to stay. 
You'll be like led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.